right over there, great wood, and the drove I walked along hours ago now. And it was pleasant. It was a lovely drove, actually. I mean, you could just walk up that drove, but it does start going downhill very steeply towards the end. So once it starts going down, and I went right the way down, forget. I went far too far. I didn't need to go that far. You know, I went, I went right the way, sort of almost over there. And I had to pick up a lane. And, uh, but at least I did the whole thing. And sometimes I came out of the trees and walked along the exposed area there and got some brilliant pictures of the coom down there. And like I say, one day I want to walk from, either walk up or walk down, down there somehow. I want to get down in the coom and walk. That's the next plan, really. Or, uh, uh, yeah, because I want to be able to do that one way or another. And um, do the, the walk down from Stout Lane as well down, because it's all going over that way. So I have had a very brilliant walk. Now, there was a period when I didn't do a lot of filming or photo, when I was getting a bit anxious when I was lost. Not lost, I wasn't lost, but trying to find the turning to go to Ashall. I, I, I thought, I'm not taking any pictures until I find it. And um, so I had a quite a... Uh, uh, well, it wasn't long, say a quarter of an hour, where I didn't really... <sighs> I didn't really, so where were the other... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been walking through over there where those big trees are. I've been walking sort of the, over that side, up from the church, which is down in that end of that valley there. It's quite a way. It is quite a way over. In fact, I think I can see it from here. It is a bit misty, but straight ahead of my finger there, I can see Ashholt. I can see the cottage that I passed. I came across some of those fields there earlier, and then made my way up, and then I went up a drove. I went up a drove, but I can see the church from here now. Very faint, and it's very faint because it's very misty, but it's right on the end of my finger. I'll try and zoom in. But I doubt if it'll come out because it's very, very misty. And I can't tend to see with this thing anyway. But over there somewhere. Over there. Could be there. Could be up a bit. Somewhere there is All Saints Church at Christon. I can hear that cuckoo. That cuckoo was there earlier today. Now I'll just try and see if I can get it on a video, uh, a photo. I can see it really clearly. I don't yeah. know if that was on, but I have walked a hell of a long way. I mean, not only did I walk all the way down past the furthest trees you can see, down, right down over there, then it had to come down, and the church is right over there, a little spot in a little pink cottage close by as well. And then I've somehow I've weaved across fields, across fields, then I found a track, which led me up beyond those big trees there, right over there somewhere, and along and along and along. This massive big hike I've done. When I think of it now, I think, my God. But it does seem easier to go down that way, doesn't it? But you've got to come up again. That's where this bit would come in. Finding a way through this bit. Which I want to do, which will frustrate me now, knowing that people, there are people that know that bit down there and can walk through that, down through that valley there, look. All the way over to Ashholt. Ashholt. Yeah, it's quite a very, it's not very good for photography this afternoon, everyone. Um, but at least I could see the church. I just made it out with naked eye. Now, on a clear day, it would have stuck out even more because it had the George flag on the top. I can't, you know, I can't believe I've walked that far, but at the same time, I can. Because when I was walking along the drove over there, I thought, goodness, this is a long way you've gone, chill. And you've got to go back yet. Do you know what I mean? And then, of course, I got over the other side of the coombe. I decided to get over the other side of the coombe. 
rather than try and weave in and out inside the comb. And by pure luck, my sister was must have been with me. She guided me to the ch the other drove on the other side of the comb. Right? She guided me there. I know she did. And I know she was looking out for me because I saw that one solo deer again. I know it was Jude. What do we do here? Because I can't remember this, but you can go either way, Shell. Um, you can go either way, I think. Um, well, we go on, we go on up, go on up. The other side of there, I've got a feeling there's a lake. Yeah, yeah. I recognise where I am now. And of course, straight ahead, you'll have Will's neck. Oh. Right. Can't do a lot of videoing from up high because um, very windy. Quite, quite nippy as well, the wind. I haven't put my coat back on yet because I know I'm going down to those avenue of trees which will lead me to Crocombe. So I'm, I, I, I know it'll be sheltered. But it could still be cold as well. It's very bumpy now, what here. What I was saying to myself a minute ago, instead of going down Triscombe Drove, a better way, that I'm not going to do it today, is you find you follow this track here and you go over and you pick up you go, so you avoid the quarry which is just beyond there and you pick up the green way and walk down into Triscombe that way okay yeah that's true so you wouldn't have to do that long steep bumpy bit but that's on the way down I'm thinking but of course today because I have done quite well I'm going to walk the whole length of that um, avenue of trees all the way to um, Crocombe Gate and then I'm walking down Crocombe Lane or road whatever you like to call it very steep road and it can be, when it's really hot, it can really be hot going up or down it. Now at Crocombe Gate, you often get an ice cream van. But I just, to be quite honest, I feel quite cold. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want an ice cream. A hot dog would be nice. Um, yeah, I could eat something like that now. Like I say, my cupboards are bare at home. I haven't got no eggs. I've got a little bit of cheese. I could have some cheese. I got some soup. I said, sorry, I just sort of hang out today. I, I got some cake. And I'll have to, I think tomorrow I'm going to be quite knackered. Um, I think I'll um, probably struggle up the shop later on. <laughs> I fancy fish and chips. I'm hungry now, actually. I actually fancy hot dog and chips, fish and chips. Um pie and chips, the Chinese, and, you know, I've, I've done such a big walk, and it hasn't been a, a dawdle. Now, the first part of me walk was a dawdle, because I thought it was just a case of walking down the drove, you know, turning off somewhere, getting to the church and walking back somewhere. I didn't know how much a hike it was going to be, so for quite a bit of the walk, I was walking quite quick like I am now. I'm putting on a little bit of a pace. It's we used to call it fartlek in running, where you do short distances, a little spurt of speed. <clears throat> it's actually very good for your heart and lungs and stuff. Okay, so yeah, we we won't be able to see the trig point now for quite a while. I don't even know if we'll see it again. I've got other pictures of it. I didn't. I took some from afar. 
that'll do. Now here we have the Marrows, Lesser and Greater Marrow Hills. Lesser, Greater, they are marching routes across where the Avenue trees are, marching routes for the Saxon armies in the past. A battle with Odo, I think he was called, took place out on there. It's all recorded in history. And I suspect if you were an archaeologist, you'd find quite a few bits and pieces out there. And of course, the Quantocks are known to be in ancient burial mounds, really. You know, a great big car on top of uh, the big marrow there. Um, anyway, we're going down now into the coom. Like I said, it's a bit breezy, it's a bit nippy, the sun's gone in. And it, we've got this terrible Icelandic grey dusty stuff in the air that we're all breathing in. Um, that's what I always say. If so I get like a bad asthma attack tomorrow, I'll know it's because I've been breathing in all this pollution. So they won't say anything to anybody though. They don't tell nobody. This is the fifth time this volcano has gone mad shooting boulders up in the air, 50 feet up in the air, or 50 yards or something, metres even. i still got a few nibblies in my bag, mind, talking about food again. I've got, I've, I've ate both the cakes, I've ate the, um, what do you call that? The quavers. i still got the hoops, i still got one cheese, I got an orange, I got a Kit Kat, and of course I've still got some sweeties. So, this is class is a really nice walk today, despite some anxiety, which is part of the, the exploring process when you get like that it's like the unknown you've not walked there before what you're gonna see will you get lost you know and things like that but once you've conquered it you think I did it I got to the church on my own steam whereas before I'd driven in Alberta there so I did I know how to get there now you just follow you literally follow that drove all the way to you come across you go through a gate and then you come across the little road and, and that's what you do so we're coming full circle now from the Triscombe stone I should check the time when I get there and then we can it was just after nine I think it was quarter past nine when, when I looked at my watch there before I set off along that drove there, in the dark. A good five hours ago. A good five hours ago. And I'm glad I did it that way and not, because you can go, there was another way you could go up a bit and then wander through the wood. Well, I think that's all right when you're more familiar. That's something I would do a, another time. Now I've done what I call the boundary work. I know the boundaries of this huge circle that I've done. I can out if I want now, I can go in and out of stuff. Right, so we're back at Triscan Gate. And we're back at the stone. I said some people have been and gone that were here, had their picnic. Uh, some people might still be out walking. Um... And in the past, of course, I had Alberta parked here when I was doing some, some exploring because that would have been handy. Imagine if I had Alberta here now. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be great? I wouldn't have to, you know, get a train and a bus and all that, you know. And when I get off the train, I've still got to walk home, you know, like a mile. I might stop it and I might go further and stop at the co-op and get something to eat. That's probably what I'll do. Right, so we're back. We're back. We're back at Triscombe Stone. Behind those people. Got it. 
out there going on. And there's the the drove. There's the drove to Triscum. <laughs> yeah, I used to park my van there. And I'm just going to touch the stone one more time. The ancient stone of Triscum. My old stone. I've been for a massive walk. See you again. <laughs>